Hello everyone, how's it going? Doctor Incompetent here, and let's play some Medieval Dynasty here in 2023, doing a complete beginner's guide to this awesome colony management life simulator in some ways. So this is a guide where what I'm going to do is just fire up a brand new game and walk you through the very basics of the controls, the UI, understanding what you need to do to start out in this game, helping you get your first settlement off the ground so that you can make a determination on whether or not you might want to purchase this game if it looks interesting to you, or if you just got the game, you can learn all of the controls and play right along with me to really get a full grasp of the game's systems because it's a game that is really excellent i have a great time playing this game but up front there were some places that i found that the built-in tutorials were a little bit lacking and i got many pieces of advice from viewers on my let's play of this game that when taken all together create a fantastic baseline from which you can operate and enjoy the game more making better decisions and just understanding a few tips and tricks and things now i'm not going to spoil it this is not a min max kind of guide where i tell you okay this is exactly what you got to build right now and this is the fastest way to make money and all of that stuff instead what i like to do is just play talk through my thought process and explain enough of the fundamentals so that you can enjoy the game and have fun with however you like. You can build whatever settlement type you want. You can go at whatever pace you want. You can focus on whatever aspects of the game seem the most compelling to you. But I'm not going to kind of try to force you to do anything. I just want to show you the game and let you enjoy it on your own because that's really the excellence of this game. So we're going to start a new game right here and I'm going to click Customize Game. I highly recommend you do this. Before you fire it up, do not just launch into it until you customize a few of these settings, okay? So what I think, um, I'm not gonna do a lot, all right? I'm not gonna talk about all of these in depth because I wanna get us going. But the first thing I think, and this was recommended to me when I booted it up, the game defaults you on um, three days for each season. And, uh, this is just a little bit too fast for me when I'm learning the game. This means that like in three days, you're going to be moving on to the next season and winter is going to be upon you very rapidly, which requires more food, heat, you know, clothing and things like that. Uh, and, and it changes the dynamics of the game perhaps faster than you might be ready for if you're just trying to get your head around things. So I'm going to boost this up. Now, this is completely up to you, okay? But my friend uh, from the channel, Grim, who recommended this game to me, said 10-day season is what he likes to do, and I did this, and I found this to be good. I found this to be something that um, was very, very helpful to me to just get enough time. Now, I do believe that you can actually change the length of season um, once you're in your game, but it doesn't go into effect until the next season, I believe, is how that works. But don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. But either way, for your first season, I just recommend putting it at something higher than simply three. Okay? All right. And let's see. Now, other things that you can uh, do. If you don't want combat, then just click unlimited hit points. Okay? Like, if you don't care and you just want to be able to fight and chill and enjoy the game and not worry about health... Um, I, I don't mean to say if you don't want combat. I guess I mean to say if you don't want combat to trouble you, then just toggle that. This is one that was recommended that's really, really tempting. I actually play with this by default value at first, but it's um, really, really nice to be able to run indefinitely. Moreover, the, the one that I think is... Uh, another huge quality of life improvement is to toggle carry weight so in this game you have a certain amount that you can carry and it's realistic this game is very realistic in many of its systems uh you gotta drink you gotta clean yourself you gotta eat there's day and night there's heat you know there's happiness all this stuff if you 
don't have this toggled, like you'll chop down one tree and that's all that you can basically carry. Uh, because I mean, hey, that's that's very heavy. And this is realistic, but it means you just have to go back and forth a lot with your items. And if you toggle this, it just makes the game faster. So th I'm going to leave it off for now just because I'm going to play with as much default as possible. But I'm telling you, you can turn this on or off at any time in your game. And if you find yourself being frustrated by any of the you know, realistic aspects, whether it's stamina, hunger, thirst, or carry weight, just turn it off and have fun with the game. Uh, nothing else. Uh, you can also, by the way, just turn off bandits if you want to just minimize a lot of the combat. I'm not going to do anything else either. Um, I'm not going to change anything. The only thing I recommend changing is making your seasons longer and then the rest of the quality of life stuff you can uh, adjust at your wish. Now I'm going to leave it on normal difficulty and I'm going to uh, click start the game. I'm just going to click B to go back. By the way, I'm playing on Xbox Game Pass on PC using a controller and I'm going to select start a new game. This is a game that actually has a really good story. I used to have a simple life. Whatever needed doing round the farm, I'd do it. <laughs> Being the eldest son, it's tough. But at least we had a living, and our plates were never empty. Then, the war came. I lost everything overnight. The last thing I remember is father pushing me away, yelling for me to run, to live. At first, I didn't know what to do. Then, I remembered. A story my mother once told me. A story about my uncle, Jordan. He made a modest fortune up north, in a peaceful valley far away from the war. For weeks, I held on to that thought, until the valley from my mother's stories, I could see it. This is where I can start a new life. And after that moving story, we are here in the game world of Medieval Dynasty. Now, let me first tell you that the story is actually important in this game. There is a main quest line that you can do that explores your uncle's past, lets you kind of come into your own and develop your own life and build a name for yourself in a similar path. It's really an interesting game. Lots of crafting survival colony management games are kind of more sandboxy and they don't really have a story, but this game does and actually you are encouraged to do the main story quests and it gatekeeps many of the different technologies or options that you can have for your settlement. So you want to do them, they help you out a lot and they're really, really funny. The writing in this game, in my opinion, is hysterical. Okay, so this is the game world and I you can look around in first person mode. You can click on R3 if you're playing on controller to play in third person mode. You kind of make a determination to yourself on which feels better for you. I like playing in third person mode myself um, because it's a little bit easier for me to target and see things, but sometimes I'll just toggle between them depending on what task I'm doing. So let's just talk about the screen and what we see, all right? You can see my character right here in the middle looking really good with my very neutral colored clothing and my rope for a belt. On the top center of the screen, there is a compass and there is a kind of tree icon which indicates the season that we're in and the radial dial with the arrow on it that's all the way at the bottom left of, of that arc on top of the compass is telling us how far in the progress of the season we're at. We have our directions on the compass and the yellow exclamation point is telling us where to go. That's where our quest is. In the upper right, you can see that we have a quest um, and it's called starting a new life. Now, if I push the options button, 
it takes me to this screen, which is the knowledge panel of the kind of main pause menu. And in here, tutorials will just pop up that give you advice about the game. And this is telling you what a quest giver is, and it tells you some very important bits of information, which is um, there are side quests and there are main quests. And it gives you this sense, like it says, explore everything and discover what intriguing adventure awaits you. And you can do these, you know, to gain advantages or do whatever you like, but it does help you understanding that completing quests earns you dynasty reputation, but beware failing them may also have a cost. So you get dynasty reputation, which is a currency that we'll talk more about that helps you um, not only be known by others, but just gates what you can build in some categories and what skills you can unlock. There are randomly generated quests and there are main story driven quests. So there's a lot to explore in the game. So whenever you see the knowledge icon pop up in the upper right of the screen, you can come into the compendium and kind of read about it to get yourself some information. Now, if I want to know more about the quest that I'm on, I can actually use the triggers to kind of move the tab over to the journal. And these are my active quests. Uh, you can use the directional pad to move between these subcategories and then down on and I can select starting a new life and it says right here the quest that I've kind of got highlighted in the upper right. When the war came I lost everything. At first I didn't know what to do. Then I remembered a story my mother once told me which is what they just gave us the text from the movie and we need to talk to the Castellion and we get a reward of upping our max development stage to a hermitage and this is kind of what i was talking about with the quests gating what you can build uh, so we will be able to build one building a hermitage uh, which is our home basically once we complete this quest so i'm going to push b to exit this screen now here's a sign which is telling us uh, the direction of some settlements denica gastovia um hornica and oh check this out so I'm looking around with the right stick, I'm moving with the left stick, okay? And in the bottom left of the screen, there is a kind of heads-up display that shows my satiety, my thirst, my health, and my stamina, okay? All of the different colors there. Blue is my um, hydration or my thirst. The kind of orange to the left of the blue is my hunger, and then um, red is my health and green is my stamina. Now, if I'm moving around, all right, I can hold the right bumper to sprint and you can see that that drains my stamina, the green bar. And then as, as soon as I stop running, the stamina will begin to regenerate. Okay. Now there's some controls that are listed on the bottom right of the screen. It says I can use the right trigger to kind of punch. I can hold left trigger to block. Okay. Um, and I can pull, push B at any time to like whip out a torch. And then if you want to put your torch away, you just push B again. Now there's a little hand icon in the bottom right that will display what I'm holding, but I've got nothing right now. I'm, I just have the clothes on my back. Now you see this wagon that's been overturned here. Sometimes you'll find these ruined wagons and these are like gold mines. Check this out. There's a hat right here and there's a small bundle and we can open this and there's a whole bunch of rye that's hidden in here. So this is the kind of um, inventory screen when you've got a container to interact with. Rasimir, who's the main character, my stuff is on the left and what I already have. I have some food, okay? Um, you know, you can see I've got an apple, I've got a broadleaf um, plantain, I have some money, 50 coins, um, I have some dried meat, which is like a long-lasting ration, and some oat rolls. Then I have Rasimir's hose, which are my pants, my shirt, and my shoes, and the red circle, as I'm looking down the list over on the left, indicates that that is equipped. So there's like in the lower right of the icon next to Rasimir's shirt, there is a circle, uh, it's a red circle, and it tells you this is equipped right now. And then over on the right, it shows you the inventory of the small bundle. And this is rye. It tells you, um, looking over at the category columns on the right, there is five pieces of rye here at 100% condition, and they sell for five each, or the price is five. Um, what they sell for may vary. And the weight is 0.25. Weight is very important because as I was talking to you about at the beginning, how much you're carrying affects your encumbrance, which means like how well you can move. 
And after a certain point of passing your maximum capacity, Rasimir will just stop. He like can't even move. Now, do you want to know your weight? You go over to Rasimir's screen again. You look at the bottom in the shaded um, row. And on the left, it says I have a 50 money. And then on the right of it, there's a kind of weight symbol that says I'm at 6.15 kilograms out of 35 max. Okay, so I have plenty of room. I can carry this, all right? And you can just push A to transfer this, and it says how much do you want to take. You can just click the right trigger to select all five pieces and push A again, and you take it. And then on the upper left, you'll see that there's like a green plus icon that indicates you've gained five rye, okay? So whenever you see a wagon like this, Explore it. And there's also a copper sickle. This is a huge discovery for us. Um, I'm going to take it. I will say, um, I'm going to take this stick as well. You'll always need those. Um, I will say, by the way, that you might not see this wagon. Okay? This could be a random thing. Uh, so... You might not see a wagon when you start your game, or if you do see a wagon, it might have different contents. They might be randomly generated, so don't worry if you don't see that. But now that I have that, I'm excited about it, and you can see in the bottom right, the copper sickle is already down there as a tool, and I can just push uh, Y to pull it out, all right? And you can see he's, like, holding the sickle, and I can use it to, you know, gather stuff if I want. Like, um, I can go ahead and gather, um, not this, but... We'll show you some things that we can gather uh, in a moment. All right. Now, let me go ahead and put this away. All right. I'm going to push Y to put my sickle away. So you can push square or X, uh, depending on your controller type, to just jump. And you can push the left bumper to kind of like and hold it to sneak around if you're trying to hunt or something like that. Also, you can hold down the down button, I think it's alt on the keyboard, and you get this kind of shady screen, and this helps you locate items on the map that you can pick up. Right now, it's just going to show me animal tracks, I believe, um, or anything else that I've unlocked a skill for, but later you can get this to like where you can find sticks and rocks and things much easier when you're looking around. And I'm just kind of going around, and when you put your cursor uh, you can see your aiming reticule. By the way, that dot on the center of the screen, that is your aiming reticule. It just shows you what your character is looking at that you can interact with. And when you aim it at, for example, the stick, you can pick it up and put it in your inventory. Um, you can turn that off if you'd like, but I enjoy having it on there because it helps me be more precise with what I'm gathering. Now, if we follow this road, uh, we're going to get to the Castilian, and I think we should do that first. So we got lucky, we found ourselves a item, and it says discovered animal spot rabbit on the left, okay? And if I push um, options again to go to this screen, I can actually move over to the map. And the map, I just push right trigger to go to the map, shows me Rasimir in the center. I'm this kind of like blinking yellow arrow that's pointing up. Gostovia is the town that I'm heading to, okay? And um, I'm zooming in with the directional buttons on the controller. The exclamation point is the quest giver. Um, this green marker is a fast travel. Uh, when you have enough money and you want to quickly travel between areas, uh, you can go here and, and usually find someone to pay to like give you a ride around. And you'll notice that we actually found an animal area but it's not displaying it on the map okay so what you need to do is use the left and right on the directional pad to change the filters okay so you could change it to quest buildings houses extraction hunting okay and we just found this um hunting spot for uh rabbits okay um and let's see <laughs> Here we go. It goes all the way down here to wild animals. So when I select wild animals, any kind of animals that I've seen just by exploring will show up on the map. Now this is helpful because if you need to hunt rabbits or something like that, you can go there. Now there's an icon list on the right column. 
that tells you what each thing is. These are badgers, for example. You know, there's deer, there's rabbits, there's birds. So the more you explore, the more you fill in these filters, okay? You can always push Y to center the map on yourself, and you can just zoom out as well, all right? So the map is super, super helpful. It marks a lot of stuff, but when you're on the default main setting, you won't see many of the icons, and you need to switch through the filters to find what you're looking for, all right? I'm going to push B to close that up. Now, some other things that might be useful here, okay? Management is a tab for people. Right now, and in the beginning of Medieval Dynasty, you're not going to have anybody. Um, but later, okay, as you go, you're going to get some people potentially to live in your settlement. And this is where you come to kind of play the colony management aspect. See what they're doing, see what their mood is, see what they need, see where they are, stuff like that. Um, as I go to the technology tab, this tells you, okay what you can build and what you need to unlock different schemes which are kind of like blueprints in this game we already talked about the knowledge tab if i wrap around to the inventory tab we looked at the left panel before when we were interacting with the crate but now we can actually see rasimir's paper doll this is another way to look at equipment more clearly okay and you can see that Rasimir has shirt, pants, shoes, and a torch, but I don't have anything as in terms of gloves, headgear, I don't have any arrows, um, and then I have quick slots, one through eight, which will be for my tools. And on this, for example, right now, all I have is my sickle, and it was automatically equipped to a quick slot because I have one available, all right? And then I can go to my skills panel, and these are all the different skill trees that you get from leveling up. So um, right now we have access to three different trees, which are extraction, knowledge, treasure hunter, and force of nature. And you can see that when we get experience, we can choose to level these up and boost our ability to, for example, cut down trees with axes, as the extraction skill does right here. You can um, move between these tabs also, and this is just extraction, by the way. Um, there's hunting, there's farming, there's diplomacy, there's survival, and there's production. So there's tons of different skill trees, all right, uh, and sub-trees within them, okay? So, for example, I'm looking at the extraction, and if I go to um, Treasure Hunter, all right, it says right here, and when I move up and down with the directional pad, I'm changing between one of the three bottom illuminated icons that I can use to level up. So I can do Extraction Knowledge, Treasure Hunter, or Force of Knowledge. Then once I um, level up these, I can move up the tree, all right? Um, and the, get tier two items, okay? So you kind of have to build up the bottom before you can move up, makes sense. And then you can choose. So getting experience and leveling up is extremely useful, which is another reason you want to do quests so that you can level yourself up and choose, oh, do I want to be better at extracting or do I want to be better at hunting? Okay, do I want to be better at farming, diplomacy, survival? Like, what do I want to get better at, all right? Um, now, I'll tell you, uh, for example, with hunting, all right, um, that shady screen that I showed you before is in specter mode. And so if you get tracking, for example, you can use that to track where animals go. You get in specter mode, all right? Um, and on survival, okay, you can get survival sense, which is what I was talking about it's tier two, but it lets you see sticks, stones, mushrooms, feathers, and herbs in, instruct, uh, in spectrum mode. It's super, super helpful. So again, uh, you hold down down, and this opens up in spectrum mode, kind of like, you know, Geralt of Rivia's uh, Witcher Sense. But note that when you're in this mode, look at my stamina draining. You can't just be in that all the time. It takes stamina to maintain the concentration to be in inspector mode. I'm going to pick up this stone, pick up this stick. You might ask, why am I gathering that? I'm gathering that because you can't have enough of resources uh, until it becomes too heavy for you. But sticks and stones aren't that bad. All right, so we're coming 
through the forest, as you can see, and down the mountain, we get into the valley. There's a beautiful lake, and we can see um, Gostovia just kind of right down here as we move. And I'm going to run down the road, excited to get to the new town. And I'm going to jump and be happy. And okay. Now, you can see that um, as I'm mousing over or targeting this rock right here, there's like some rock that I can actually mine, but it says a pickaxe is required, which I do not have yet. There's also a box right here, but when you're in town, you'll notice that this says rob on the A button. Do not do that. Do not steal their tools or anything, uh, but you can talk it's to nice them. nice to meet you. And you can just talk to this lady right here. And this is where you get into the fun of the social interaction of the game. So this is um, Dobramira. And Dobramira is 18 years old. And you can try to romance her if you are looking to get married. Um, you can ask her where to find something, like the blacksmith or whatever. Um, you can ask her for rumors. You can do small talk. Or you can ask her to move out of the way. So you could say, hey, have you heard anything interesting recently? And she says, not really, just the wind blowing, which is not very interesting. But if you ask her where you can find stuff, you could say, hey, where are the vendors? Or, you know, where are certain farm animals or wild animals? This opens up another screen, which anything in these square brackets is going to open up, up another submenu. So if I say, hey, where can I find some birds? Um, then she's like, oh, I don't know about that. So then you say, okay, well, fine. And then vendors, it opens up another screen. Well, let me take that back. Not everything in square brackets opens up a submenu. It's just a category indication. And usually it does, but sometimes it doesn't. So, you know. All right. Let's look at, uh, hey, where is um, extraction? And I need to know where. Is there a lumberjack? And she says there's a lumberjack in Branica and Lesnica. And these are actually different towns that you can go to on the map. So I'm going to just get out of the conversation by pushing uh, B. But then it opens up automatically this kind of social tutorial window that says finding a wife is the first step to secure your dynasty survival indeed if you want your name and your dynasty to survive you've got to get a wife your future spouse will move into your house and aid you in various tasks one day she may provide you with an heir but nothing comes easy first you have to win her heart and so you can go to the knowledge menu immediately by pushing options and get even more information about how to romance people. But I'm going to close this. You can look at this on your own. We don't need to do this right now. That's awesome. Um, and it's a cool part of the game. But right now, that is not our concern. That's a little bit further down the road. We want to just talk to the Castilian. So we're going to go into the town and just kind of strut through here. I've got a beautiful strut. And uh-oh, I'm halfway down on the hydration menu. And it says water. Hydration is crucial in the wilderness. When the water parameter is depleted, you will start to lose health and basically die, which is d disastrous. You can refill it by drinking various beverages. Water can be stored and transported in buckets and the water skin. So um, this is important. By the way, um, if you push start to go to the pause menu, um, it might be useful to just save your game. All right, so I'm going to save it right here, and I'm going to save it, uh, get a, give it a name of tutorial because... Um, you know, if anything bad happens, if you die, if you're messing around, you want to be able to load your game. All right. In this pause menu, um, you can also, you know, go to all sorts of things like you can adjust um, aspects of the game itself if you want. And this is what I was talking about. You can adjust the length of the season here, but it does say applied after season change. So that's useful. Um, to just see what you can apply instantly and what goes next season. All right. Um, unstuck also, if you get stuck in the terrain, come here to do that. You can change the, the heads up display. You can quick save even. I'm just going to push circle and close that. And we're going to strut through the town. And before I even talk to the Castilian, which I was going to do, let's go get some water. So I'm going to run down, and the easiest way to get water early in the game is to just come down to the lake, all right? And as soon as you can see the water, um, and you're not targeting reed, you can just, you know, hold the A button down, and it will fill up the radial, and you will drink. 
and you can see I'm already full. Like just one drink like that has completely filled me up. All right. Now I will say that right here, this read, this is very important. You'll need a bunch of this and you can just hold A to collect it. So I'm just going to gather some more read while I'm here. I recommend you get a little bit of read at least. You need this to build the roof of your house. Um, and it's annoying to have to run back here. Um, sometimes, uh, oh, don't need my torch out. And I'll drink a little bit. So that should tell you right away that one of the things you want to do is be near water in this game or build a well later down the road so that you can get access to drinking. And a water skin is super helpful. Now, I do have a copper sickle, by the way, but the sickle is actually not used to harvest reed, so uh, that's not what that's for. And there's two babies just hanging out and talking. And I told you, this game is just so much funny, uh, fun. It's got a lot of charm to it. Like, there's just these kids just chilling. And here is um, Unighost. And by the way, I don't pronounce any of these names or places correctly. I apologize in advance. But this is the quest guy. You can see there's a yellow exclamation point next to his name. And if I talk to him, we can progress the quest. And he says, those eyes, I didn't think I would see them again. One blue is the sky and the other black, like a lump of coal. And uh, you say, are you all right? You look like you've seen a ghost. You could say whatever you want, by the way. Sorry, you must have mistaken me with someone. I'm new in these. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me stop myself. I always do this because of the placement. You need to read their dialogue first, which is on the bottom, and it updates. And then your character's dialogue is what you read as a response to their updated dialogue on the bottom. I always am reading top to bottom, and it, it throws me off. He says, so you aren't one. Good. For a second there, I thought I'd lost it. Haha, <laughs> but your eyes, you just look like him. You look just like him. Um, and I say, sorry, you must have mistaken me with someone. I'm new in these parts. I just arrived at the valley. My name is Rasimir. I'm... And he says, Wanda's son, aren't you? Uh, Eordan's nephew? What? Did you know my mother? Not really. I knew of her. We didn't ever actually meet. He wanted to keep his families separate. I don't think I understand. You will. Wait. What did you mean by did? I know her. Is she well? I hope she is now, whatever that might be or wherever that might be, I've lost both my parents in the war. Damn it. This world, I guess it can be as cruel as it is beautiful. I'm sorry, my boy. Nobody should lose their loved ones at such a young age. Um, it's okay. They've died so I could live, and I plan to make the best of this life that I can in order to honor their sacrifice. That's very mature of you. I'm sure they'd be proud hearing that. You mentioned my uncle. I actually came here looking for him. Oh, Rasimir, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Your uncle Jordan's no longer with us. He passed away three years ago. I'm so sorry. I understand how you must feel. He was a dear friend of mine. Uh, so that's it. I'm the only one left. Don't say that. Hey, look at me. This valley is filled with warm-hearted people who can gladly aid you with whatever you need, and I'm one of them. So what should I do now? You are free to go wherever you like and start a new life. I hereby grant you the permission of the Castilian to build and farm on any unutilized land in the valley. Thank you so much. Construct yourself a house and see what comes next for you. You can even build a whole village if you please. There are many travelers passing through. Maybe some of them would like to join your settlement. Just like that, I can take the land free of charge? Well, you'd have to pay taxes to the king annually, but apart from that, you're free to do as you please, as long as you don't break the law of the, uh, of course, or at least if you don't get caught doing so, if you know what I mean. Um, that sounds amazing. The valley looks beautiful as well. I think I'll stay here and see what fate has in store for me. I'm glad to hear it. You can find resources all over the land. Grab a few rocks and sticks from the ground and craft yourself a simple axe. With it, you can cut down the trees and chop them into logs. Then you can create a wooden hammer that will be crucial in the building process. I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. Listen, when you build yourself a home, come back to Gustovia and talk to my wife, um, Debroniga. She manages the tavern. Ask her, ask her to feed you. You must be famished. Then grab some beers for both of us and come back. I'll tell you some stories about Jordan. 
That sounds like a plan to me. So this is the kind of the first main quest. And you definitely want to make this your primary objective. Collecting resources. All the basic resources can be collected in the wild. Just look around and reach out for them. We've been doing this with sticks and rocks. Um, okay. So we say great, and you can go to the knowledge menu to get more information on this. I'm going to close this. Now we've been given us another main quest, which says a new beginning, and they want us to get four sticks and two stones. And it dynamically updates, so if you've already been collecting sticks and stones, it's retroactive. You've got them right there. Um, and there's another lady who is not his wife, who's sitting with him, and that's just fine. All right, so... Now, if you look on my compass, there's all sorts of icons that have appeared, all right? There's vendors that appear here, there's quests that appear, um, and there are... Uh, let me go to the map and just show you what we're looking at, all right? So, we can see right now... Mm -mm -mm. Let's see if any of these... If I get closer... Okay. Well, there's me. Um, interestingly, the buildings here in the town aren't immediately being displayed. I don't know. Maybe you have to actually go interact with them and use them for them to show up. Uh, but right now, we actually don't need to worry too much about that. Later, though, we will need to find these. And these also, this might be part of the gatekeeping of the game we'll get access to these or be referenced to them when we get further on the main quest line, okay? So right now, I'll just show you that there's a quest you can do here, which is like a side quest, and there's even one in um, Burrowo, the town across the uh, river lake thing here, water source. All right, but before we do any of this fun, let's get ourselves some sticks now you saw in our inventory we have plenty of food so we're good for a bit and yes here's the guy that i was telling you about a moment ago this dude is like the fast travel guy and you can talk to him and you can be like hey uh i need a ride and he says okay i could take you to these places but look how expensive this is we have 50 coins okay so we can't go anywhere this is for rich people all right um or at least more wealthy than us day. people but it's super convenient all right. Now, what we want to do is just wander out and start picking stuff up. Pick up sticks. Um, these are more than one stick. These kind of like little saplings. And you just, whenever you see the green A button or whatever key is bound to collect, if it pops up for you, and it has like a wheel with just a sliver of it in green represented, that means you need to hold down the button to do it. All right. And we've got enough sticks. You can see that's gone. Now we just need some rocks. So you kind of just walk around looking at the ground, uh, trying to find some stones. You'll get the hang of it, but this is, again, why I love having inspector mode show me stones, because it can be frustrating to try to find these. Oh, there's a bird. We can just run up and catch it. You can even, like, you know, pick these daisies if you want. Nothing wrong with doing something like that. They don't weigh anything, so it's useful. And, oh, I think I saw it. Here it is. Boom. We've got a stone. So now it's telling us it's late, and it says if you want to sleep, you'll need to build a house or craft a campfire. Sleeping is available between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. If you choose to sleep, your character will wake up the next day. Sleeping in the bed restores small amounts of health, while resting by the campfire does not. Going to sleep during the season will always result in waking up in your own house. So you have to kind of like um, sleep to change the season, I believe, um, or at least to have it happen and wake up in your own house. Um, tree cutting. So now we can cut down a tree, but we need an axe. So it can be bought or crafted in the creation menu, which we're going to talk about now. So... You can equip the axe in your quick slot at the inventory and take it out. Approach a, street, a tree and start cutting it until it drops down. Then chop down the fallen one into smaller parts to acquire logs and other resources like sticks and feathers. So very similar to Valheim in terms of cutting down trees. But I'm going to tell you this because it's super important. I was terrified. 
you cannot be hit by your own tree and take damage like in Valheim. So don't worry about the tree falling on you in this game, all right? Uh, now, if you want to craft something, okay, you hold up on the directional pad, and then you get this radial menu. This is the handcrafting menu or the building menu, all right? Um, and you can use the left stick to kind of go to handcrafting, all right? And um, I guess it's not the handcrafting menu. It's just the uh, building screen overall. And then this will show you handcrafting. This is building larger structures. We're going to go to handcrafting, all right? And to get into here, we need to just push the A button. Now, you don't need to hold up on the directional pad and use the left stick. You can just toggle up, all right? Now, on this radial menu, you can see all of the different tools we can build. We're going to want most of these, but right now, if there's a red bag icon next to the item, that means you don't have enough resources. It tells you what you need. And if it's illuminated fully, there is no bag icon next to it, like this stone axe. It tells you it's going to take 10 sticks and 2 stones, and then in green parentheses, next to that it tells you how many you have so we're going to make an axe right away and then when you do this your character will start doing it like world of warcraft style just you know fiddle his hands in front of him and he makes an axe all right so now we're getting hungry and the game is telling us our satiety bar is halfway down and um we have plenty of food to start with but you can also get food foraging hunting and farming okay uh, setting traps, things like that, and we'll get into that in a moment. But for now, if we're hungry, we can just go to our inventory and just decide to eat something. So, like, if I want to eat this apple, it tells you, okay, I'm selecting the apple. You can see the gray bar running across apple on my inventory, and in the bottom of the inventory, there's a, a tooltip window that tells you this is an apple, and it gives you plus three food and plus two water. So if I just um, push A to eat it, I will eat it instantly. And then on the bottom right, underneath Rasimir's paper doll, there are character parameters. It shows you your temperature. It's in the green range. You want to keep it in the green so your character is not too hot or too cold. Um, it tells you your health, satiety, hydration, poison, intoxication, um, and different levels, different resistances, insulation to the heat and the cold, things like that. Um, and uh, there's also your stink which is, you know, important. If you want to romance people, you got to clean yourself first. People don't like it if you smell horrifying, okay? Also, um, the numerical value of your hunger and thirst is important when looking at, like, plus three, you know, food, what that means. So I can eat this, but if I go to my dried meat, you'll see that it gives you a little bit more food. So I can eat some of this, too. Mm -hmm. And I can eat some plantains. eat all those up, eat my apples, and my satiety is much better, but I'm still hungry. Um, so I can eat an oat roll. Now, I won't eat an oat roll because I saved this for last. Look at that, 55 food. My God, that's a lot. But I can eat some jerky and just kind of top myself off and be happy. All right. So I'm going to close this, push exit. Okay, so now that we've eaten, we need to equip our axe, all right? So you need to open the... the quick bar. Now, if you're using the keyboard, this is a little easier. If you're using a controller like me, you have to push down L3, and it opens up this radial, and you don't have to hold it, just like up. I misspoke again on that one. Um, you can you can hold it, but you can just toggle it, which is much easier. Then this will show you what you have equipped in numbers 1 through 8. All right? So, uh, we only have the sickle. So, we need to actually first go into our inventory and get our axe that we crafted all right down here and equip it so when we picked up the sickle it automatically put it in a quick slot for us i think maybe that was just because we had nothing either way we crafted this and it didn't automatically go into a slot so we need to select our stone axe from our inventory okay and then we need to push a to equip it and then this will tell us like okay which quick slot do you want to put it into and i'll just put it in number two all right so now you see i have my sickle and i have my stone axe by the way um just for edification, you can see that this copper sickle is worth a ton of money. It's worth 140. It's copper. It's much better, okay, um, than stone in terms of its value, effectiveness, durability, things like that. Um, this is only worth 40, my stone axe, for example. But when I look at the copper sickle, it says that it's used for harvesting crops. 
I might actually want to sell this maybe I could save it it's nice uh, but I don't have any crops and I won't have any crops to harvest for quite some time so it's not super useful now but it might be a nice boost of money if I uh, were needing it one thing that you might need money for early game is eating like if you run out of food it's really convenient to just buy some bread from Debronica um, Unigo's wife in town because it just gives you so much satiety all right so now we have the axe, so we can just push L3 and then um, use the left stick to kind of select the axe, okay? And then you push the A button and your character will pull it out. And we just go next to this tree, this maple tree, and just hold down R2 and start chopping it. Its durability percentage is like how much before it gets chopped down, all right? And we can then bust this up. Oh my god. Okay, everyone, holy smokes. I just had to research this. I haven't played Medieval Dynasty in a few months. They have updated the game, and now trees do hurt you when they fall on you. So please disregard my earlier comment about not worrying about trees falling on you, because you didn't used to have to do that. But now, for the sake of realism, they have changed it, and we just took a bunch of damage. So that's a, that's a shame, but it's a good lesson to learn now without killing us. Um... So we can regenerate health by sleeping in our bed, eating herbs, or going to the um, herbalist to cure wounds. We don't really have to worry about health, uh, health right now, but oh my god. Poor guy. Look at him. Now we need to be much more careful about chopping this down. To be honest, it was already down. Like, it was a kind of weird physical interaction. So I'm going to have to be much more careful about trees forever. All right, so I'm going to collect these sticks, and I'm going to gather this... log now that we have a log okay um and you'll see i'll take this log now look at i'm going to show you i'm going to go to my inventory i have 15 out of the 35 i can carry so you could carry some logs this is a smaller tree all right but these babies are heavy you can see now i'm already up to 20 and once we get more equipment more things in our bag it's really going to limit how many logs we can carry but um it's still not like ridiculously realistic like you couldn't just carry this tree. Like, nobody could. So it's it's somewhat reasonable, but if you want to eliminate it altogether, I would not blame you. Now, we have four logs, which means if we go to push up and go to the handcrafting menu, okay? Um, push A. Now we can craft some new stuff. I can craft a shovel, okay? For example, um, I can craft a hoe. So there's some really good stuff. Now, we need a stone pickaxe um, for sure, but we want this hammer, okay? So we're going to make a hammer right now. Bam. And you can see the new beginning quest has updated once we picked up that stone. Now it wants us to cut down trees and collect straw. This is all basically getting us to make a house. Okay, so I'm going to go to our inventory. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to select this um, hammer. And we need to equip it and we're going to put it on the hot bar. And I'm also going to um, make myself a shovel. All right, I'm going to push up, go to handcrafting. And I'm going to go to shovel. It just takes a log to make a shovel. It's really easy. Um, or And uh, two logs, rather. And then now that I have a, a shovel, I'm going to select it. And I'm just going to put it on number four. And then we're going to push L. And we're going to select the shovel like this. And this lets you remove a stump. Removing a stump is nice because it just gets rid of... Oh, I'm not targeting it. Here, let me get closer. There we go. It gets rid of the unsightly stump, and it just gives you a log. And it's, like, super easy to get a log that way, so it's really, really nice to have a shovel. It doesn't take much to craft one, and it gives you a log right away. It is nighttime, all right? But unlike perhaps Harvest Moon or something like that, unless, again, they've changed it, you do not need to sleep. And you shouldn't have to worry about sleeping on your first night because, you know, it's hard to get all the stuff you need for a house, like, right away. But we're going to work on it, all right? I'm going to get this axe out. We're going to cut this tree down. Move away. My god, run away. I got to be so much more careful now cutting trees than I used to be. Holy smokes. All right, chop this baby down. By the way, you see, just by doing that, I got a bunch of feathers and sticks. So this is a great way to get sticks, just cutting down trees. Oh, sorry. I'm valheiming it for a second. You just need to pick it up at that point. You, you can't chop it any smaller. Once, it, once you do that. 
Um, all right, so now we have a bunch of logs, and we need to cut down more trees, and we also need to get straw. So I'm going to head closer to the water to get that straw and to get some trees. Luckily, the tree does seem to fall away from me, but I don't know how random that is. We're going to find out. And now we can collect these logs. We probably won't be able to... Yep, we're already carrying too much. I was going to say carry everything, but that's okay. What you could do at this point is go to handcrafting and see if there's anything else we can make. And yes, there's a bunch of tools that we can make that we should make. Number one, a wooden spear. This is super helpful. Um, so I want to make a wooden spear. It just takes one log. I have nine, but I actually want to push Y, okay, to open up the craft more screen. I want four wooden spears. You might say, why would you want four wooden spears? Well, this is for hunting. You can throw spears to try to hunt. And if you have a spear equipped in one of your quick bar slots, and then you throw the spear, and you have other spears in your inventory, it will automatically put a new spear into your hand, basically. Um, and you can throw more spears. So you want to have a bunch of spears to throw for hunting to keep yourself at a safe distance from creatures. All right, and let's just chop this baby down. Heck yeah. By the way, if it's dark, you can pull out your torch and make your nighttime work a little bit easier. You see how that log is rolling? All right. And now I'm carrying too much again. But when I converted the logs into sticks, it, they did become slightly lighter. Okay? Also worth noting, in the bottom right, your torch has a life. And so you can't just have it out forever. It will burn out. All right? And in the bottom left, you'll see that I have an encumbrance wheel that has opened up to indicate that I'm carrying too much. And this is just bad for us overall. So if I go here and I say, hey, craft me something, um, it's always good to have backups of tools. So I'm actually going to make a backup hammer so that if my hammer breaks, I just have another one handy um, and it will just alleviate my burden a little bit. Now, if you can't, what you can do is just select your log, okay? Now, you see how my encumbrance on this screen, it's only yellow. I'm only slightly overweight. This isn't terrible. I can get away with this, but it is a lot. So instead, you can just push X to drop the logs, and it opens up this screen. You can use the um, left and right on the stick to change it, or you can use the directional pad, or you can go all or none with triggers. And it tells you how much weight you're dropping. Um, I'm going to drop down um, just two of these logs for now and go a little bit less and complete the quest. Okay? So we need to chop down some trees, but I'm not going to complete the quest here. Oop, we just spotted a duck. I'm going to put my torch away because there's a little bit of, like, you know, nice, beautiful star and moonlight that I can see by somewhat. Uh, but I need to come here and gather wheat, like we were talking about. So you need 32 straw before they're going to be happy. So just come here and get as much as you can. Sometimes you could stand in one spot and just collect a ton of it. Um, you're looking for these cattails, these beautiful hot dogs. And you just stand there and just keep holding down A, pushing it, holding it until the game tells you you can't anymore. And you really can't have enough of this stuff. I'm going to drink while I'm here, fill up my hydration bar. I'm going to collect a bunch more reed. It doesn't weigh very much, and it's annoying to uh, come down here. This is a really good place for collecting it. So I'm just going to get a ton of it. And oh my gosh. Look at that. I leveled up in survival. And why is that? Let's go find out. Skills. You can see there's a star on the skill tab, and there's a star on the survival tab. And if I go over to it, okay... I can now level up. This is because in this game, doing certain activities will get you experience within that particular tree. Okay, so this is for gathering, I'm getting survival experience and for surviving. So now we have a choice where we can level up survival knowledge. Um, we can become more res uh, resistant to temperature changes and we can become more resistant to getting poisoned. I like survival knowledge early because it just gives you 5% more experience 
which helps you level up even faster to get to tier two where we can get survival sense, which will like just make our life so much better. So I'm gonna go ahead and get survival knowledge. I'm gonna push A and it says, are you sure you wanna spend your skill point on that? And I say, yes. And now we have one skill point here. And right away, look at this. By spending one point, it looks like maybe with my next skill point, I can get survival sense. Let's go find out if that's the case. All right, uh, I need this stone. I'm gonna pick it up and it's too heavy, uh, which is a shame, but all we have to do is go into our inventory. I'm gonna drop a log. I can't, there's too many logs. Actually, you know what I can do? How much am I overburdened by? Oh, just the slightest amount. I'm just gonna eat some meat. And then there we go. That has helped with my um, weight. So now I just need to cut down one more tree. But before I do it, let's think about what we want to do. We want to make a bed so we can sleep. So we need to think about where we want to settle. I'm going to open up the map. Now, you can settle anywhere. This is the beauty of this game. You can build your settlement wherever you want on this map. I recommend you want to be close to water and you want to be close to settlements. Additionally, you need a lot of space to move around, and you probably want your area to be flat so it's easier to farm and build houses, okay? So that being said, I've been told by people that you can build houses all over the map. You can have smaller sub-settlements and have your villagers kind of living all over and give them orders and, and whatnot, regardless of where they're living. I like to have a centralized base. So in my first attempt, my let's play, I built a settlement right around here, okay? Because I felt like I had enough space and it was close to Gustovia. But here, I think I'm gonna try to build over here, right in between Denica, Gustovia, but close to the water and with so much space to spread out, okay? So I'm gonna run this over there. Now it's nighttime. Let's just see if there's anything. Oh, it's a lost shipment. Open it up, and oh my goodness, we just got eight free coins. Loot this freely. It's green. Nobody cares. You can take it. They left it behind. Their loss is our gain. We got some cash, which is great. Now, I'm going to just go this way. Stick to the road at night. There are dangerous animals out there that will wreck you. Um, I guess, speaking of that, it might be worth our while to equip some of the tools that we made. So I'm going to go ahead and, for example, put this spear on our quick slot at number five. And we can then just walk around with a spear out if we feel like we might need to fight something. So if you want to throw your spear, okay, you can push R2 to, you know, kind of stab with it. But if you hold L2, you get this throw menu, all right? And you can be like, hey, I'm going to throw my spear. And it goes way out there. And you see how I equip one of my other spears? And then you can just run over here and pick your spear back up. It's just in the road right here and take it. Every time you throw it, it loses durability. In this case, it lost 25% durability. All right. So throwing them wears through them, but it just takes some logs. It's not hard to make them. I just wanted to show you that. All right. So now I'm actually going to pull my torch back out. And where are we on the map? Let's just take a look. All right, I'm past the first bridge. I'm going to move past this second bridge, all right, and go over here. Now, I could beeline it through the forest, but I really recommend sticking to the road. It's nice to just run along the road, by the way, um, because you are indeed, you know, spotting animals and such. And oh my goodness, another broken wagon. Like I said, ooh, here's a free plank. Pick it up. It's heavy, so we might be carrying too much, but that's, ooh, is this an axe? It's only a stone axe, but it's a spare. So we now have a backup. And let's see what's in the bundle. Look at this. There is wine to drink. This will get you a little bit drunk, but it is nice. We can even sell it. Look how much it's worth, 260. And then there's bread to eat. This is like absolute Shangri-La. Now, if you just hold A, you can pick up the whole thing without going to the select screen. Um, so I can just hold A on these and I've got them both. Now. Something I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to my inventory by pushing the left trigger. And you can see I'm carrying too much. I'm just going to put um, like two logs into this container so that I'm not carrying too much. And now if I want to come back, I can just pick up logs right there easily. 
but I'm going to run myself here. The road is also great just for looking for wagons like that. If you see shipments in wagons, it's they're basically in my the kind of early game treasure chests in this game. That's how I think about them. All right. So now we're past the bridge. Let's look at the map. And we're in a place where we can start thinking about building our home. So let's go into this little area and look how wide open this is. It's flat, okay? And there's plenty of space for us to spread out. We're close to the water for drinking, filling things up, but until we can build a well. So I'm going to actually just settle us here. I'm going to push the stick and I'm going to select our axe. We need to cut down one more tree anyway for this quest. All right, it's going down. And now it says building. Building menu can be accessed through the creation menu. Okay, so that radial I was showing you before, I was calling it the building menu, which is um, sort of how I think of it. But the actual name is creation because it has a building menu within it. And it also has the handcrafting menu. So we just push up to open this up. And then we select building on that radial from the creation menu. And we can select what we want to build. Structures cannot be built too close to other villagers and require a relatively flat surface. So this is why we're not building it close to a village, but close enough so we can go sell stuff and interact with people, get quests and things. To fully construct a building, you'll need a hammer. Okay, so we've got a hammer. Uh, while buildings and houses, you can uh, choose what wall and roof module to kind of give a design. All right, so I'm going to close this and let this fall. All right, so I'm going to get that log in a moment. Uh, oh, there's mushrooms. I mean, there's so much good stuff here. I'm just going to hit this until we break it. All right. Now, um, I'm going to push the left stick. I'm going to select my shovel. All right. And I'm going to dig this out. When I said this is wide open, you see all these trees and you might be like, you might think, well, what are you talking about? It's wide open. There's trees everywhere. Well, yes, there's trees everywhere. But if we chop them all down and remove the stumps, then there aren't trees. We can clear this out very easily, and we need all the logs anyway. So I'm going to push my stick in to go here and select the hammer. So if you push left trigger, you can open up the build mode for your hammer and switch between build, which is default, repair, or destroy. We want it on build, so I'm just going to select that. And then what we need to do is push up to open the creation menu, go to buildings on the radial, the house with the hammer next to it, push A to select it, and we're going to go down here to um, about 7 o'clock on the radial for the house, push A, and then now um, we can build a small house. Notice how simple house and um, the regular house here say that we don't have enough technology, so we need to level up our technology to get access to these. So right now we can build this, and we're going to select it, and then look, there's this big house that appears that we can build, okay? And all we need to do is move around with the right stick and walk around with the left stick. There's a badger, by the way. It's kind of, I think that's a badger, or I don't know what that is. Maybe just move away from it. And we can build this wherever it's green. Once we find that it's where we want it, okay, um, we can push the A button and it's there. So I've got a house. It's facing the water and the road. I like this for now. All right, I'm happy with this. Now, once you get to this point, you can start constructing it, all right? All you need to do is walk up to it, and you push the left trigger, I'm sorry, left trigger, right trigger, to hit it with your hammer, and you will start adding the appropriate resources. It needs nine more stone, all right? So you can add these in piecemeal, and this will slowly complete the foundation. So what we need to do is just walk around and find stones, all right? So here's a stone, pick it up. You're gonna want your torch out for this one. You can see our torch is about to burn out, okay? I'm going to let my torch um, burn all the way out, indeed. And I'm going to select this. But you know what? I'm going to go here, handcrafting, and oh, it happened too fast anyway. We just need to make a torch. But you see, this takes 10 straw. It's brutal. All right, I'm going to make a torch. And pull it out, and we're good. Oh, give me that torch back. There we go. And pick up a stone, pick up a stone, pick up a stone. Now, if stones start to become too heavy, because they are kind of heavy, all you have to do when you're building stuff is just walk over with your hammer. All right? And we're carrying too much. Just add the stones. You don't have to t do all ten at once. And you see how it's slowly filling up the, the light blue blueprint area to green, indicating that it's done? 
all I need to do is now go get some more stones. And we will fill this in. So you just walk around with your torch out. It's raining. It's a little uncomfortable. Everything about this says, I want my house. So we're going to gather stones. All right. Now, if you're going to start out and you see this, you just gather stones up front and store them somewhere. But they're actually pretty easy to come by. And now we have enough stones. I'm going to um, run back to the house. Oh, and I tried to run, but you'll notice I can't run very fast because I'm carrying too much. You'll start to slow down and eventually stop altogether if you get too much stuff. I'm picking up another stone. And Rasimir, I always call it like he's walking like he's constipated um, when he's carrying too much. And it's kind of maybe another way of saying carrying too much. But now we got the foundation done. Once that's done, it completely populates. It fills in and it looks awesome. I love the graphics in this game. It's just such a good looking game. Now we need logs. Um, and we could start building the framing. Boom. And remember, we need a bunch of logs, but we've got logs lying around. I just wasn't carrying them because they're heavy. All right. And we can just kind of gather these up, gather some sticks, and fill these in for the framing. We need two more logs. Well, if you need a log, then go ahead and get an axe. Let it fall. Eventually. There it goes. Back away cautiously. I'm telling you, I'm once bitten, twice shy. All right, pick this up, pick this up, pick this up. That's fantastic. And we're just going to walk over. I need to select my hammer and finish building this. There we go. Now it's the framing is done it's time for the rest so you need to add sticks just hammer it you can hammer it wherever okay boy the rain is really noisy hitting the trees and you need to build each wall so you can hit each wall wherever and you see it fills in it looks awesome it's like a woven basket it's a wall -a wall aka basket wall now you see how it says new building unlocked well the reason that's unlocked is because we got some technology points. I believe that's what they're called for just building. So doing things in the game is one of the best ways to level yourself up. Now, we're building this window portion, and we need a bunch more sticks and logs. So I'm going to select my um, shovel and dig this out. Okay. And I run over here. And we need to hammer that, but we're going to need more logs anyway. So I'm going to actually select my axe and just get down another tree. I put my uh, torch away, by the way. You can see it's becoming daytime again. I apologize if it's hard to see the game at night, but your first day, you're not going to have a house unless you're like ultra fast at building one. It takes a while, which is why I like to change the seasons from three days to ten days because you can see I already took my first day just kind of like talking to people and exploring the game. I'm going to select a hammer. I'm going to build the front door. It's, it's one of the most satisfying things about this game is just like filling, filling it in, seeing it develop. You need, of course, a lot of sticks and such. It does take a while to build your house, but it's cool. It, it feels very satisfying, and um, you feel like I actually just built myself a house. Uh, we can gather a bunch of sticks right here, by the way. Fill this in. And if you can add the ingredients, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. It's like it doesn't say you have to have a log first and then sticks. It will accept any of the ingredients it's looking for at any time. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and select my axe. Chop down this tree. By the way, you see how my health is low? Honestly, as long as we're not near any dangerous animals... 
we're fine. There's not going to be any raiders or anything scary attacking us this close uh, to the starting town. Okay, let me just kind of carefully knock these out, run away. Oh my goodness, it was nearly our demise. And we can just pick all these up. And of course, we're going to carry too much really quickly with all these logs. But what I like to do once I get a bunch of these logs on is just get my hammer out and add them to any portion of the house that needs them. Now the walls are done, let's go inside and let's see about building the roof. So each section of the roof takes a log and a bunch of straw. So we can start filling these in. There. Um, this takes a log and sticks to build the uh, upper wall. There's our attic. Oh, we don't want to decorate. If you see decorate, okay, that's for like, you know, cosmetics and awesome stuff like that. Right now, we're trying to just make sure that our cursor is pointing at building so that we're doing the right thing. There we go. All right, so now we need sticks and we need logs. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and select uh, my shovel and dig these out. It's also like two for one. We're clearing out a space for more structures for ourselves. There we go. Pick up another log. And we need a bunch of sticks. You can see we actually left a log over here from chopping, or maybe this just fell from recently. Okay. I'm going to go back inside the house. It's coming along nicely. I'm proud of this home. And I'm going to select my hammer. Bam. And I'm going to select this. And we're going to knock this in. Heck yeah. There we go. Almost there. All right. You see, the game has you collect the requisite straw. I collected way more than that. And if you had chopped down all the trees and kept everything, I believe that you would have exactly what you need to build the house. The problem is you can't carry it unless you turn off carry weight. And I crafted a bunch of, like, spears and stuff. Hey, hey, look at this. We completed this first portion of the quest, and it says chapters are a series of missions that appear at the beginning of the game and introduce you to the game's mechanics. They also assist you in the initial stages of your new settlement. So they're kind of like a built-in tutorial that I highly recommend you do if you're a new player. They give you, I mean, they're required to do in, in most cases anyway, but they give you great rewards and they teach you the game. So why not do them, okay? So you'll see that like chapter two wants you to set up a rabbit trap, for example, to help you catch food, which is incredibly important. Then there's also a story quest to go back and talk to... Um, the Unigo's wife, get the free food and the beer and learn more about the game, get some more experience, get some more reputation, okay? So we've completed the house. And look at this. By completing the house, you see that it automatically populated it with a bed. We have a campfire, okay, where we can cook, and we have a storage chest. So holy smokes, we've got a whole bunch of great stuff here. Immediately, what I like to do is open my chest, okay? And I'm going to go over to myself. And I'm going to do, 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 sort the items. If you hold right trigger, you can sort them and select. I always sort by weight descending, okay? And I see like what's weighing the most. And I figure out like what I don't need to be carrying around. So I can actually put this sickle away and sell it if I want to. But right now my weight is actually decent. What's what's killing me with the weight, okay? What's What's weighing so much? Um, well, I can put these feathers away, and I'm just going to hold A um, to put the feathers into the storage chest, okay? Now, you, you don't see it on the storage chest because, uh, there we go, the chest was selected on food. Let me go back to my chest, and I'm going to, oh, why am I not wearing my hat? My God, what a mistake. I'm embarrassed. I should be wearing that. Okay. I want to sell this wine in town to make some money to buy food uh, because... It's a little bit difficult, and let's see. You could put some stones away if you want, save them for later. I'm going to carry everything else. So now we've built our first house. We can sleep here if we want and don't want to mess around at night because it's hard to see. 
Um, or you can work through the night, all right? Now, we're getting thirsty, so we immediately need to run out to the river and get something. But that's easy. We're going to want a water skin really badly. I recommend buying one so that we don't have to just go stick our face in the water. We could also build a well. We can sleep also in the bed to restore our health if we like. So at this point, we need to go back to town. We need to progress the quest. But we've built a house. We've learned the controls. We've built a bunch of tools. And we're doing great. I think this is a good place to end this first episode of The Beginner's Guide. And I plan on progressing this a little bit more to show you some more of the game's systems. But I hope this gives you a great look at the game so you can determine whether or not you want to buy it. And if you are if you did buy the game and you followed along, you understand the basics of the controls and have completed this much of the quest and are really starting to see what an awesome and fun game this is. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, I'd love to help you answer them. Please post those in the comments below. And if I made mistakes, which I always do, and you're a Medieval Dynasty player, and you want to leave some advice below, please do so to clarify points, but I ask that you just do it in a non-spoilery way so that we can preserve the mystery and fun of the game for new players um, and not overwhelm them too much. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. <laughs>